And they're trying. Let's get to the commodity pits now. We have Jay Taylor, President and CEO of Taylor Hard Money Advisors, who's joining us at the NASDAQ market site in New York City. Still with us here on set is Nikki Hutley from Access Economics and, of course, our own resident commodity reporter, Sri Jagaraja in Singapore. Jay, great to have you with us. I'm going to start off with a barrel of crude, which seems to be getting increasingly expensive despite what Sri was telling us earlier, and that is that maybe the fundamentals don't necessarily justify this price. Would you agree with that? I very much would agree with that. I, I think not only in the short term, but longer term, we've seen crude oil rise much more dramatically than, than the demand for, uh, for crude. And, and honestly, I think it's more of, a, uh, more of, a, of a, um, a currency story. I think it has more to do with the enormous amounts of money that's being created out of thin air, starting with the United States and all the other central banks around the world, are, are basically inflating. And they're trying to avoid... Uh, a deflationary implosion that we saw following Lehman Brothers in, in 2008, September, uh, by flooding the markets with enormous amounts of money. And I think what that does is leads to all kinds of speculative games in the commodities because people sort of either consciously or subconsciously realize that, that the paper isn't really worth much of anything and they're trying to find things of value, of real value. So I suspect that, um, that these price rises in crude are not really justified on the basis of, uh, of, of underlying economics. Jay, uh, what's the trade then in these circumstances? Should you sell into this rally and uh, what's going to be the catalyst uh, for reversal? Is it going to be a larger than expected build in the EIA inventories or is it going to be uh, a gain in the US dollar, especially if the debt woes resurface once again in the Eurozone? Yeah, well, I'm not a trader myself and, uh, I, and I'm really uh, still very much a deflationist longer term. I think that we're in a secular bear market in the equity markets that started way back in 2000. I think what we're seeing here is still a normal bounce off the lows that, that occurred uh, in March of 2008. And so that generally we're seeing a reflation play. My, my bet is that we're going to see another shoot a drop in the, in, the, in the credit market somewhere along the line, whether it's sovereign debt, whether it's in the United States with our, with our, state, uh, our states going broke, you know, I'm not sure where it's going to come from, but one thing I do know, we're seeing debt grow exponentially. If you just look at the enormous amount of debt, because remember, fiat currency, which is what we have, it's no longer an asset-based currency. It hasn't been for some time. It's all based really on debt money or liability money, I like to say. So whenever Obama or Bernanke or the, federal, the, the central banks around the world increase the money supply, what they're really doing is creating uh, more debt. And debt money is growing much more rapidly than income is growing. That's true in the United States especially. I don't know if it's as true in, in places like where there's growth in Asia, but it certainly is true in the U.S. So I suspect the next shoe to fall will be another credit implosion. And I think that will make the dollar stronger, at least initially, because remember, as the world's reserve currency, the most debt is in U.S. dollar terms. Right. And when, when the credit trade is reversed, then what you see is okay. uh, the short covering of the dollar. So I think that that would bring crude down, just as it did, and all the commodities down, just as it did following the Lehman right. Brothers' failure in 2008. Jay, uh, let me just pin you down here. Uh, I mean, clearly, if we do see a pullback, then where is it uh, going to take us? Uh, where is support, uh, more specifically, uh, in the price? Are we seeing uh, the building off a floor around $70, $75 a barrel? You know, I'm, I, as I say, I'm not a trader, so I, I haven't really honestly looked at the charts uh, to, to try to find some support levels. I suppose that could be a, a near-term support. Um, but, you know, where did, where did oil go when, uh, you know, following Lehman Brothers? It went to 32 bucks or something? I mean, it was some ridiculously low price. So I think that if you realize that so much of the pricing, prices in, in all commodities basically are uh, are not real. They're really, it's, it's just, you know, money created out of nothing that has bid up the prices. And if it's all based on a credit expansion, when that credit expansion goes into reverse, then you'll see enormous declines in, in prices. So, I, you know, longer term, again, if I were a trader, I would have a ready answer for you. I'm a longer term buy and hold sort of a guy, so... Jay, can I just say, um, how much do you think that story translates over into gold markets where obviously you're seeing tremendous amounts of, of, of wealth in, in countries, particularly developing world, India, China, where there is solid demand for the commodity. So it's a slightly different story than what we're seeing with the oil markets. So medium term, how much do you see that, that the prices there are being driven by fundamental demand as opposed to, you know, um, just, just as you call it, debt creation? 
Yes, indeed. I, I think it is a very much a different story, gold and the commodities in general. First of all, I don't see gold as a commodity. I see it as a monetary metal. And what we saw following Lehman Brothers was a dramatic rise in the price of gold. In fact, I like to look at gold relative to the Rogers Raw Materials Fund. And before Lehman Brothers, an ounce of gold would have purchased 15% of a unit of the Rogers Raw Materials Fund. Following the crash in 2008, it went to 44%. It's currently around 35%. So an ounce of gold will still buy almost twice, twice as much of the Rogers Raw Materials Fund. And that's a broad basket of, of energy, base metals, you know, all kinds of commodities. It's got clothing commodities, everything imaginable in there. Uh, Jimmy Rogers created it as a, as a measure of the cost of staying alive. And, and so what I think is playing out here is the same thing that's played out in past major credit contractions. And that is a major increase in the purchasing power of gold. You know, people get hung up on the price of gold. I say, don't pay so much attention to whether gold is at 1,000 or 2,000 or 10,000. What will an ounce of gold buy? That's what I care about as a mining share analyst, because that's primarily my focus. I look at mining shares. Jay. And if the real price of gold is going up dramatically, then we see mining profits improving. And indeed, I think that's what we're seeing in the gold sector right now. Jay, couldn't you argue, uh, uh, very quickly if you could, because we're running out of time, that the PGMs, Platinum, Palladium are looking more compelling than uh, gold because they outperformed gold in the last quarter? Sure, you can look at the short term, and I think that uh, you can make that case for the PGMs. You can make that case for silver as long as the system is expanding as it has been from the March lows. But when the system goes into reverse, then those kind of metals that are used more in industry, I think, don't do as well as gold. So, you know, if, if you're an inflationist, I think you have to bet on silver and the PGMs, on energy and those things. If you're a deflationist, as I still tend to be at this point in time, then I think you have to go more for gold and cash even. And, you know, stay short-term treasuries as, as, uh, as distasteful as that is uh, as an American who gets next to nothing in treasuries. It's been a real pleasure to have your thoughts on the show. Thanks very much for your conversation. Jay Taylor from Taylor Hard Money Investors.